Do you have sticky notes and pieces of paper everywhere with things you don't want to forget? Do you lose track of emails that you need to respond to? If these things are true for you, then Outlook Tasks may be a good tool for you to look into. I'll show you how to use Outlook Tasks today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today I'll be walking you through Outlook Tasks and how to use those effectively and how they can help you get rid of the piles of paper, the notes, the sticky notes, however you're keeping track of your things to do or the things to remember that you have going on in your mind. And also how to keep track of those emails where you have an action that's needed, but you're not going to do it right now. Let's dive right into the training. A lot of people have heard of Outlook tasks or have even seen it in their Outlook, but they don't really know how it functions. So we'll go through a demonstration of how to use all the different aspects of Outlook tasks and then some ways that it could benefit you to keep track of what you need to do. So first we're in our inbox and we get to the tasks area in this bottom left corner. We can click this third one that looks like a clipboard and that's your tasks. So we'll click on that. Depending on your view, you may or may not see this preview area. If you'd like to turn that on or off, you can go to view and use this reading pane option. For now, I will turn ours off so you can see what most people see with their tasks. I want to start by explaining something that confuses a lot of people. And that's this left hand bar where it says to do list tasks. And in my case, it says tasks on this computer only. The to do list is everything that you've flagged in your email. You see all these flags here on the right. You can see the ones at the top do not have the tasks icon here on the left. That means that these are flagged emails. So the to do list shows you both those emails that you flagged and your list of actual tasks. The tasks area on the left will show only the tasks and not those flagged emails. You can see that it shows as blank for me and that's just because an email account where I had created all of those tasks you saw no longer exists. So you don't need to worry about that. To create a new task, all you have to do is go to the upper left area and choose this new task icon. Once you choose that, it will open up this box here and you can give your task a subject. We'll just call this task one you can fill in any or all or none of the rest of the boxes. It really needs to have a subject. And if you want a reminder, you'll definitely need to do this reminder line, but you can choose whether or not you use the rest of these. A lot of people think that they have to use all of the boxes and that's not the case at all. Use what makes the most sense for you. I'll give you a little more information about each of these options. The start date is going to be when you actually started, if this is a project or if this is just a simple task, when did you start that? Your due date is obviously when the whole thing is due, whether this is again, a project that you're following all the steps or if it's just a simple task. And the key here is the due date will not necessarily drive a reminder. You need to manually put in when your reminder is and the reason is the due date is not necessarily always when you want the reminder. You may want several reminders before that. And how I always used to use tasks when I worked in a financial firm was to keep track of all of the information that happened on the different days that I worked on a task. So mine were usually tasks that lasted for two or three weeks. So I would make notes for each day that I worked on it and what happened. So I had that reference for the future. And each day when I finished, I would set a new reminder for the next time I would work on that task. So that's one way that you can use the due date versus the reminder. Your status has automatically in progress, completed waiting on someone else and deferred as your options. Your priority automatically has low, normal and high built in. And this percent complete is if you'd like to keep track of approximately where you are in the process, how much you have complete. Now we'll talk about some other options that are available for your tasks. And as you can see, 
I have my menu up here, but it's not in the ribbon format, which is the big piece that has all the icons. So in order to get that set up, a little bonus tip is you can right click anywhere in the area where you see all these different items. And you can see it has customize the ribbon, collapse the ribbon, which is currently checked and use a simplified ribbon. I would actually like to turn off collapsing the ribbon. So I'll check that one. And now you can see my ribbon is per permanently there. If I want to change it back, I can do the same thing by right clicking anywhere in this area and then it's choosing to collapse it again. And you can play with customizing the ribbon and using the simplified ribbon if you want to know more about those. Now that we can see all of the options available, let's talk through some of these. You have your basic options here on the left. If you don't have OneNote, don't worry about what that is. You can forward tasks just like you can forward emails and you can have more details about a task. Here is the actual date completed. It will add that in once you complete the task, but here's where you can go in and see that information. You can put in total work hours spent, um, work expected versus actual work spent. You can put in information about a company. You can put in mileage if this has to do with something where you're traveling and also billing information if you need that. There's a lot of extra information that you can put in the details section of your task. Here is a shortcut to complete it. If you're someone who's in an organization, you can choose to assign tasks to other people and they can then assign tasks to you. Definitely have a conversation with them before you do this to make sure this would be helpful for both of you. This can be huge if you have a team of people and you're needing to keep track of who's working on what and you're needing to be able to assign, let's say an email comes to you, but it really pertains to your assistant. You can assign a task directly to them and I'll show you in a moment how to turn the email into a task in the first place. With the assigning task option, you also have the choice to send a status report. That is if someone assigned a task to you, you can have a status report sent to the person who owns the task. With assigning tasks, you have the owner who assigns it away. They can change who the owner is, but typically they wanna keep track of what's going on with that. You can have, as the owner of a task, you can have automatic status reports sent um, from the, the task that you own. Basically, it'll show you what's been worked on on that task. Or you can choose to do that on a one-off basis, and that's where you would use this button here. If you need the task to be recurring, where it happens multiple times, or it happens all the time, every week, every day, you can have recurring tasks. This is a very powerful option if you want to track certain items that you need to do every week. And if you're someone like me who likes to check things off a list, this can be a very powerful option to check it off every day, every week, every month. The next option is to categorize your task. This is where you can have different departments if you're in a larger company or if you're in a small business, maybe it is the different areas that you work in as the owner of the business. Anything you want to use as categories, you can put here. And I have a whole nother video on categories that I will put the link for in the notes below. The next option is your follow-up flag. And we'll look a little more in detail on this. There are flags for different times that you would like to follow up on a task. The one thing about this system is that it doesn't necessarily make a reminder for each of those items. So you'll want to play around with this, see what works best for you. Do you want to use the flags? Do you want to add just physical reminders or some combination of the two? The next option is to make your task private. If you don't want other people in your organization who may have access to see your tasks to be able to see one, you can make it private. The high and low importance is the same as this priority option right here. The last couple of options in the window are to zoom if you need to zoom in and make things a little bigger. And then the save to Evernote is something completely separate that if you have Evernote, you can build this into your Outlook. The other options in our menu or ribbon are very similar to what you would have with emails. So I won't go into every single option, but we'll touch on a couple. 
With tasks, you can attach a file that's under insert. You can also attach an Outlook item. So this would be if you want to attach an email, you need to attach a calendar item. You can attach these items so that you can get right over to what's associated with this task. If the rest of the items are grayed out for you like they are for me, that just means you haven't clicked in the notes area of the task. Once you do so, all of these options will be available to you. And you can see they're very similar to what you would use in Microsoft Word or writing an email. You can attach pictures, you can put in shapes, you could create a whole flow chart in here. Really tasks you can do, just about anything you can do in Microsoft Word. Now let's talk about some of the options in this screen where we're looking at our list of tasks. We can see this simple list and you can see these options right up here. We could look at a detailed list that gives us more columns. Our to-do list is a smaller option here. This is the to-do list format. Now this is different from the actual to-do list on the left-hand side that includes everything. This is just a view of your tasks. And then we can see the prioritized items and have those grouped together. So here we see the normal are first and then the high are after that. If you scroll down in the options, you also have active tasks, completed tasks, which we don't have any in this case, things that are due today and in the next seven days. If you scroll down once more, you can also see tasks that are overdue, tasks that are assigned, and then server tasks, which most people will not have. I like the detailed view, so I'll choose that. And now we can talk through our columns a little bit. On the far left is your checkbox to complete a task. You can do that from this view. You don't necessarily have to be inside the task to do so. Here's our icon to say that this is a task. Next is the priority column. And you can see this one has high importance. This one doesn't have anything. But if I want to quickly add a low importance for this task, I can click in the area of that column and it gives me a little drop down. It's a much faster way than going into the task itself. And I can choose the low priority and you can see the icon that it shows to designate the difference between those. The next column would show us if there was an attachment or not, which there is not for these. And then we have our typical ones of the subject, the status, this is where it can be in progress. It, we might be waiting on someone. In fact, let's change this one to waiting on someone else. You have your due date, which is great for organizing your tasks. You can look at the last date that it was modified and you can change the size of these columns. You're looking for this little two-sided arrow and you can click and drag to open up or shrink columns. So I want that one to be a little bit bigger. So we can see the last time that this task was modified. We can show date completed. The column about what folder it's in is not as helpful in this task list, but if we went back to the to-do list, this is where you can see if I scroll up, here we see these are in the inbox folder, the acuity, so these were the flagged items and what folder they're in. And then below that, now you can see all of our tasks. If we had different groupings of tasks on the left-hand side, it would show those. As we talked about before, the categories is where we can have different departments, different areas of the business that we're working in, really anything that you need to have as categories. And lastly, we can see when things are flagged or not flagged. A lot of people don't realize that you have added organization that you can put in here if you'd like. You can create folders for your tasks just like you do in your inbox with your email. If you right click on the tasks folder here, you can add basically a subfolder underneath it is what we're doing. I am going to call this our test task group. And here, if I needed to add that somewhere else, I could, but it does default to put it under tasks. So that's what I want to choose. And now you can see it shows up over here. Now I can choose to move my tasks into that folder, or as I called it, a group. You can click and drag and drop once you see the blue. 
It disappears from your general task list and shows up in our test task list. The last thing I want to show you is how to turn an email into a task. This is a very powerful option to help you track things in your inbox if you get a ton of emails. If you can turn an email into a task and then have a reminder for when to work on it, you're much less likely to lose track of what you're working on. To do this, we'll go back to our emails and I'm going to turn this acuity scheduling into a task. What I want to think about when I'm doing this is whether I want the text within the email to be a part of the task notes or if I want the email to be an attachment within the task. Let's look at the difference. If I do a left click and drag the email down to the tasks icon down here, you can see a little tiny plus sign is showing up when I put my mouse there. Let me move it down one more time so you can see that. And you can see the little, the little no sign until I get down on top of tasks. And when I drop that, it opens up a new task for me, and the default is to have the wording inside the email as a part of the notes for my task. Now we'll talk through how to make the email an attachment within the task, if that's what you would prefer. In that case, you need to right click, again, right click on the email, pull it down. And when you go to drop it on tasks, when you let go, it's going to give you some options. And so you might always want to do the right click because you can choose to copy it to the task with the text inside. That's what we just saw. We can choose to copy it here as a task with an attachment and move here as a task with an attachment means that the email will disappear out of your inbox and will become the task instead. Copying means that the email still resides in your inbox. Moving means that the email will disappear. And we'll do each of these so we can see the difference. We already did the first one by doing the left click and dragging. So we'll do this one, copy here as task with attachment. You can see this is a little cleaner and some people prefer it. You have your task and then the email is an attachment if I double click on that, it goes straight into the email. Now let's see what happens if I choose to move here as task with attachment. When I click on this one, the inbox moved and that's because the email disappeared from the inbox, but you can still access it here as an attachment. I can double click here and here it is within the task. So you just wanna make sure that you don't lose track of the task because the email is now attached to it and that's where the email resides. It's no longer in your inbox. This can be a very powerful way to clean up your inbox if that's something you want to do, but still keep track of what's going on and have that email as a reference. As with any other productivity tool, what I recommend is that you start by having a vision of how tasks will work for you. You don't have to know all of the ins and outs of how they work yet. Just have a vision of what you'd like it to do for you. This will guide you as you start to set up tasks. And you'll want to start small by maybe choosing the lower priority tasks from your emails or just your lower priority tasks in general, track those in there. And that way, if you tend to lose track of them or you find that the system is not working for you, it won't be a big deal and you won't have spent a ton of time setting it up. No matter how you choose to use Outlook tasks, I hope it's a powerful tool for you and your productivity. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. You can also put questions in there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can on those answers. You can also give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. You can also share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. Once you do, you'll see a bell icon. That will allow you to receive notifications each time a new video is posted. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.